Hello and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video and today we are taking a look at a Salaman Great List that has been dominating some locals here in the UK. Uh, there are two really phenomenal records with this, so uh, Sev who sent in this list is currently 14-1 with the deck, um, based on uh, the amalgamation of locals he's taken it to. And the exact same 40 card main deck uh, has been piloted by Giles who is 13-2 with the list as well. So. Very, very strong in terms of what it's been doing in the local scene, and definitely one to consider down the line. Uh, before we dive fully into this list, we are going to be covering the rounds and the siding strategy as well later in the video. And when we come on to the side deck, we will talk about the strategy itself, but here we have the most commonly sided cards from Sev. Uh, of course, the side deck did change a little bit between the events, um, but the general strategy we can use to build better decks down the line. So let's get into this. Triple Ash Blossom, Triple Lady Debug, Triple Nibiru, Triple Parallel, One Falco, Double Foxy, One Gazelle, Double Jaguar, Double Spinny, Double Mining, One Reborn, Triple Desires, One Circle, One Sanctuary, Double Will, Triple Goes and Match, uh, Triple Imperm, One Rage, and Double Raw. Um, so what do we think about these ratios? So you've got 9 hand traps, uh, which is pretty decent for the current metagame. Um, perhaps we might find that uh, Nibiru starts falling off in popularity as people start to make their heralds a little bit earlier, or start to put uh, Gear Freed onto the table a little bit earlier, makes it a little bit more redundant, but it depends on your local scene of course. Um, Imperm is definitely going to stay within favour because it has that nice Numeron interaction, um, and Ash Blossom is just so generic that uh, if you are going to a local scene you probably want to have this in your deck. Uh, people are playing Triple Desires in this type of build now, which is good to see. Uh, generally, we tend to see 2 and 2 alongside Desires, uh, so I think it's pretty interesting that they've decided to focus on the Raw over the Rage. Um, I guess if you have the one Negate and some Hand Traps and a Floodgate, you're probably fine. Um, so yep, goes and match in the main here as well. Seems pretty decent. Um, you can always just bring back your Foxy if you have to deal with it. Um, and then, of course, the Parallel like Seed in here uh, gives you the Rank 4 option. Um, and the interesting thing about this one is they haven't decided to play the Gravedigger's Trap Hole uh, with the Rafflesia, they've just gone for the Exceed on its own, so the list may be a bit susceptible to Nibiru. Um, but, you know, I guess it depends on how things end up down the line. You have so many disrupts, even if your combo gets broken, that's probably fine. Uh, so looking at the extra deck, we start off with those rank 4 targets, the uh, Bistwella and Baguska. Uh, obviously the most powerful ones from previous formats and uh, being highlighted here again. Then we've got the one access code, one heater. This is going to pick up um, a lot of uh, usability down the line, given that we have uh, the Infernobles now, so you could take an Infernoble tuner potentially and turn it into a Fibrax in a different deck. Maybe not in this deck, I don't think there's a Fibrax in the extra deck for this one. Um, but if you are playing, say, like Sky Striker or something, Heater definitely is going to be proving its worth. Even in this deck, uh, you can start taking some of that Infernoble stuff and just Linked Ladder, which is always nice. Uh, then one Lingaribo for the Trap decks, uh, triple Bailinx. Double Heatleo playing the two different rarities, uh, different uh, artworks here. Uh, and then triple Sunlight Wolf, one Transcode Talker, and one Update Jammer, so you can do the 10,600 damage if you have to. Uh, and then for the side decks and the most popular side cards, one Pancrotops, triple Cyclone, triple Droplet, one uh, Mind Control, one Red Reboot, and triple Summon Limit. So you've got additional Floodgate options if you decide that Ghost and Match isn't doing it for you, or if Floodgates are proving really important. Maybe you take out a hand trap or something, or even a, a parallel exceed if your rank fours aren't that, that powerful, and then you can put in your summon limit for that matchup. A droplet just come out, really nice interaction with this deck, the fact that so many of your cards do stuff in the graveyard, uh, or you can just get rid of like your spell traps, um, and then add them back down the line is always nice. And then Cyclone has to be one of the... I, so in my opinion, I think it's a super surprising position where we are, where Cyclone is applicable again. There are quite a lot of people playing some stun decks where if you remove one Floodgate, you're fine, so you need the Cyclone. Um, uh, people play Mystic Mine, and then also really important right now is Shadol Schism. Um, has been brought into the format through the power of the Dogmatica deck, so you can just uh, turn off that Schism with a Cyclone and carry on playing the game. Uh, so that's it for the list itself. As I say, 
uh, two fantastic records of 14-1 and uh, 13-2. So let's dive through the matchups that Sev's played, um, and then we'll get onto the side strategy afterwards. Uh, so we've got 15 rounds to cover. So the first round was against Pendulum at 2 then Dark Magician at 2-1. That was interesting. I suppose they can banish your resources, which uh, can sometimes be a problem. Um, and then Salamangre, the only loss he's had from these 15 rounds is Salamangre, and this is against Giles. So the guy who's playing the exact same list. This is the only loss he's had. That's like, that's how powerful this deck has been for him. Um, and then the fourth round he played against uh, Cyber Dragon. He's also played against Altergeist a 2-1, Salamangre a 2-1, Grand Magi a 2-0, Destiny Hero a 2-1, another Grand Magi a 2-0, another Salamangre a 2-1, um, Pendulum 2-0, DDD 2-0. Uh, that one's interesting actually. DDD uh, was sort of spied as being a potential meta contender uh, when we first had the announcement of the Master Rule 5 update or the Master Rule 2020 update. Um, so I think it's really interesting that DDD has, has kind of done nothing since then, you know? Uh, it, it has a lot of great options there still. Um, so yeah, a 2-0 against that deck. Then another 2-0 against uh, Gren Maju. I guess it's a popular choice at his locals. And then against Altergeist 2-1 and another Altergeist 2-1. So no Rock or Eldritch here, unfortunately. Um, and this was actually slightly too early for Infernoble to be a powerful deck at the time. So now that uh, Rise of the Jewelist is out, maybe we'll see some Infernoble matches coming down the line. Um, and impacting these uh, local trends. But if this is your kind of local meta, then Salamangrit could be a really, really good option for you. Uh, in terms of the Sidon strategy that he applied, so he's given us um, us the, the strategy for all of the most common matchups that he faced. So for Altergeist, obviously you want the Cosmic Cyclones coming in and then Nibiru's out when you're going first. That seems pretty standard. Uh, and then for going second, you get to play the Reboot and the uh, Pancratops and uh, if you have it, you can put in a Lightning Storm as well for a 6th card there. Um, for Gren Maju, uh, interesting, right? So going first, he's putting in some limit and taking out Nibiru. I think this, one, this one's really interesting. So uh, a lot of the uh, Gren Maju decks do, thing, do things with like uh, Gizmek or um, uh, the Golden Castle cards in order to banish lots of stuff, but they put bodies on board in the result. So if you have a summon limit, you can potentially shut off an opponent's turn and stop them from going too deep into the game. Um, and then for going second, he's got the Pankratops, uh, a Lightning Storm, and a Cosmic Cyclone. They do play a lot of traps in that deck, which is interesting, so having the, the Cyclone as the out to it seems pretty decent there. Uh, and then for the Salamangrate Mirror, so summon limits, uh, summon limits coming in going first, obviously goes a match, does nothing to them, so it's just a floodgate swap there. Uh, and then when you're going second, you do have to break the back row, so Storm, Reboot, Pankratox, and Cosmic all come in. But you have to get rid of stuff in order to fit those in, so he's actually taking out one raw, one Cyanet Mining, and one Will on top of the triple floodgate of the Gozen match coming out. I think that's a really interesting one, um, because you're, in a sense, you're cutting down the consistency of your deck, but they are, you know, Will you can search anyway, same for raw, and uh, mining is, um, uh, since it's a hard once per turn, maybe that's not something you worry about too much. Uh, whereas the plus of desires, which he's kept in, is obviously a little bit more impactful if you have two cards to play off there. Uh, and finally for Pendulum, so when you're going first, you put in your triple summon limit uh, and take out the Nibiru's. Um, which I think is fair enough, you know, it's just a straight swap of um, usability there, they can probably play around Nibiru a little bit better. Uh, and then when you're going second, you put in your Pankratops, your one Lightning Storm and your one Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, I wonder if he has access to another Lightning Storm, in which case maybe you put in two Storm instead. Um, but he's taking out the triple Ghost Match. Once again, uh, you do not need the Floodgates for going second. Uh, so that's it for this list. Um, we've got uh, a little bit more information here, so I did ask him the sort of typical key insight questions. Is it for going first or going second? It's obviously for going first, as you can see by the inclusion of the Gozen match. Um, because he is blinding first, the typical end board, uh, or at least the most consistent one, is to have Wolf with some kind of trap, normally um, uh, a Raw. Uh, and alongside that you have a rank 4 and some additional hand traps as disruption if possible. Uh, the deck's win condition is basically just a resource game. You want to grind the opponent out with your traps and your Baguska, and then kill them with the access code talker eventually. The hardest matchup is uh, from online testing, the Adamancipator and Infernoble Knight decks. 
Um, they can be really hard, uh, but you can instantly win them if you go first and you open the Gozen match because they do have to use their extra deck monsters which aren't fire or aren't uh, earth in order to keep playing the game. And then which matchups are free? He wouldn't really consider any matchup as free because Salad is sort of um, not like it's the worst best deck as he says. Um, it has a really good grind game but it still loses to decks like Eldritch uh, without opening any floodgates which is a bit problematic. Uh, any changes that he'd make to the list? Well, due to the inclusion of Dogmatica in the meta, he might swap the second roar out for a copy of Prohibit Snake, actually, so that he doesn't lose to a Winder. Um, he would also consider swapping out um, this single copy of Lightning Storm that he occasionally has in the side deck for a copy of Mind Control, as you can see on the list that we've shown here. Um, would he play again in the future? Probably yes. However, he feels like it's getting worse and worse at the moment. It just instantly loses if it doesn't open two hand traps going second. Um, and he thinks that the format is sort of uh, getting to a decently hard reset point, so maybe the next few ban lists could bring the deck back to power. And also shoutouts go to Giles who helped him build the deck, and to Joe for beating him with Nordics. So thanks very much Sev for coming on and sharing your list, and for Giles too for helping out with the build. What do you guys think about Salamangre? Is it potentially a meta contender? Uh, definitely something worth giving a shot if your locals are similar to the kind of thing that Sev and Giles have been facing. Uh, let me know what you guys think, would you make any changes, and I'll see you guys in the next video.